Hello and welcome to Racing at the Highest Level, right here at the Royal Turf Club. That's an appropriate tagline for the Racing at the Royal Turf Club. I'm Mandira Lalwani, delighted to be here at Neuralia for the winning post. First up, let's talk about the history of this beautiful race course. Racing here started way back in 1875 when it was run by the Neuralia Gymkhana. It's come a long way since then, it's seen its ups and downs. Let's have a quick look. Six thousand feet above sea level and nestled among tea estates, Neuralia is steeped in history and beauty. This small town called Little England has several attractions. The most endearing is this racecourse. These hallowed grounds and stands saw their first ever race back in 1875 when Neuralia, like all of Sri Lanka, was a British colony. In fact, this race course came into existence even earlier in the 1840s when an English gentleman called John Baker created a training course for his brother's thoroughbreds at a hill near their home. The inaugural race meeting, however, was organized by the Neuralia Gymkhana Club and these meetings carried on intermittently till 1900 when the current race course came into being. From there, it was passed on into the hands of the Ceylon Turf Club in Colombo as the paths that were felt that would manage the Neuralia course and the race meets better as it had greater financial clout and so the ability to offer better prizes and would be able to make improvements to the course and its buildings. Horse racing flourished and peaked in the 1950s. However, along with the ups come the downs and Sri Lankan racing took a severe hit in 1956 when the sport was banned in the country. This mandate led to the closing down of the Colombo race course in Cinnamon Gardens as well as the Neuralia course. The Colombo race course was converted into an international rugby venue, so when horse racing returned to Sri Lanka in 1981, Neuralia became the only surviving race track in the country. In August 2011, the Sports Ministry took over the ownership of this race course from the Sri Lanka Turf Club and after its long history of various owners and organizations, this race course finally came into the hands of the Royal Turf Club. Let's have a look at this story of transformation of a place that was defunct and written off to now, which is one of the most beautiful race courses in the world. Most things in this world, you know, it's, it's a question of thought. You know, if you want, if you think and if you have a vision and then, you know, you can go towards it. And uh, horse racing was very successful many years ago and then it started dying off. So I always felt that we could revive racing and bring it up to that standard uh, if you really put a lot of effort into it. Effort may just be the biggest understatement for the complete transformation that the Neuralia race course has undergone. Under the patronage of the Royal Turf Club, this race course has literally come back from the dead. From the stands. The steward's room. The facilities, the racetrack. Similarly, behind every successful venture is a strong team and the one at the Royal Turf Club is most easily the envy of many. We have fortunately, have, we have a very good staff as well. Uh, Mr. Wayne Wood, as you know, is our CEO who is a very experienced man. Then Marshall has uh, given life to this whole race course. He, he has brought it alive and you know he has his own rules and people are following rules and he has brought a lot of discipline. And then we have uh, Mr. Nikhil Purna and Dr. Balaji, who has saved many lives here and looked after the horse health. So I think we are all a, have a very committed team that's really going towards the, the vision that we have. Rienzi Edwards has clearly handpicked his team with a lot of thought. And his passion and love for the sport is complemented ideally by the experience in the likes of Wayne Wood, Sinclair Marshall and Cyrus Madan. 
former champion jockey Marshall, who was instrumental in setting up the Apprentice Jockey School in Bangalore, as well as training several Indian riders, is savouring every day that this new role and opportunity has brought with it. Well, to begin with, uh, the boys were very backward and I had to bring them up to what, what was happening all over the world. And they are keen learners. The most important thing is we want to get a horse simulator over here, which is very important to, I mean, to improve the balance, to improve, you know, changing the reins, changing the whip from left to right. And uh, of course the basics, the basics of race riding, which I've been teaching them. But, you know, there's a lot of theory going on at the moment. Nothing practical at the moment, it's all theory which I'm teaching them. And they are very keen in listening. I ride along, work with them every morning. So they can't tell me I try to do this and I try to do that because, hey, I'm doing the same thing as well. So if I can do it, try it, so can you. However, along with the successes and dreams come challenges. And given its recent foray into this world, the Royal Turf Club has effectively combated two most compelling ones, the ills of doping, as well as the corruption that can become a byproduct of gambling. We have uh, entered into an agreement with Sri Lanka uh, Anti-Doping Association, which is a Sri Lankan uh, government-owned arm, to uh, test all our races. So they attend every race and they do a random test on horses. And uh, then they generate a report, which I believe the lab is in India, and they, they get us the results on that. Gambling is not a part of our, our business. And uh, you know, we are building up, we are following the Dubai line, which is working quite well. Time now for a quick break here on the Winning Post. When we return, we take a closer look at the kind of preparation that's gone into the Royal Turf Club Christmas Day. Thank you for staying with us. You are watching The Winning Post. We're here at Neuralia, which is one of the most beautiful and quaint race courses. Not to mention the city itself is absolutely delightful. Steeped in tradition, steeped in culture, which is seen here the race course as well. A race course that is moving from the old to the new, but the juxtaposition is just something else. Have a look. Although everything here is spanking new, the charm and romance of this quaint race course is untouched and unharmed and some practices reflect this very juxtaposition of the old and the new. Like this box, this is where the judges sit and watch each race. The catch? There is no technology to assist them when it comes to declaring the order of finish. So how do the veterans do it? Well, it goes back to uh, English racing. In fact, some of the older tracks still have something which is right on track side. And uh, you don't have a height. You've got to be very, very careful while judging. But it carries such character in its own way that it's an amazing little uh, thing that you see here. And it just adds to the ambience and the quaintness of the Norelia race course at uh, RTC. Well, a deity is probably the easiest thing to give. When you're not too sure about something, then why take a chance? Just go with what it should be. Cyrus Madan has spent many a day with the team on ground to ensure that the Royal Turf Club has a competent and capable judge on its panel. It's basically the start and the finish. And also there are a lot of things involved in the background of the racers. You know, the handicapping and uh, the, the weight, weights and everything. Uh, and also there are a lot of uh, rules involved, uh, there are separate rules of racing uh, for the racers. So all these things come in when the races conduct. The learning curve may have been steep, but there is no dearth of enthusiasm to learn and perseverance to excel. The Royal Turf Club is pulling out all stops, but let's have a look at the festivities, the music, the fashion, the ambience over here. Fashion, music, entertainment, mascots. No stone was left unturned for the Christmas race day at the Royal Turf Club at Neuralia, where there was something for everyone. Be it the who's who of the city, to the little tots for whom the lure of Father Christmas was irresistible. Oh, bright, bright, 
The fashion show brought back with it the days of yore, transporting the audience to an era far long gone. Elegance and style being the mainstays, this one was spellbinding. was the lady behind this spectacular display of fashion best suited to the world of racing. It was a very unique combination, the fact that I was a, a house owner and also happened to be a textile and a fashion designer. And then people always, you know, when they want to come for races, they want to dress up, you know, the hats, the fascinators. It's no secret that horse racing is a heady sport and everyone who comes into its fold finds it tough to let go. The sports minister of the country was no exception. He participated in the race day and then took over the floor. With me is the Honourable Sports Minister of Sri Lanka, who obviously is a man of multiple talents. He's been a model, an actor, a singer par excellence, and I think now a sports minister. Tell me about your journey from there to here. Uh, yeah, because I started uh, my career from the uh, university, and uh, after that I contested for the uh, normal council elections, and after that came in Parliament uh, in 2004 and resigned from parliament in 2013 and contested for the provincial council election for the chief minister post and i got the highest votes ever in sri lanka so and after that again i contested in 2015 to the uh, to parliament and i got elected and so i'm here i'm not surprised you're obviously a very dynamic man that's the political part of it tell me about the fun the modeling and the singing part of it yeah i did modeling in 1998 and after that uh, at that time actually when i uh, just came into the university. I uh, had a band uh, called uh, Sue Serene. So my my brother and myself, we both uh, sang at that time. And after that, I I have uh, so many songs in uh, YouTube. You can see. Uh, so that is my uh, the, the career in my uh, modeling and singing. You know, it's been absolutely. It's just so refreshing to see somebody who's not. Frankly, sorry to say, but like a minister's image is state, serious, you know, work. But it's really such a pleasure to meet you and see these different facets to you. Coming back to New Relia and the race course here, you know, it's what, what Mr. Edwards has done and managed to achieve is nothing short of remarkable. Would you agree? Yes, actually, uh, early it was in a bad shape, I must tell you. Now, actually, after 2016, as I uh, came in as a minister of sports, we had a uh, so many problems with uh, the clubs, they have fought for each other and I settled them, asked them to have a peaceful manner and have some uh, uh, good races like this and earlier we, we had, uh, in April we had a uh, season in Norelia, we had all the races and all kind of things but uh, now I must uh, tell you I am thanking to all these people who have done a very good job. Uh, to have uh, six or seven races in every year. Uh, I think uh, they have come a long way, so we have to think about the future uh, because I think India is very much involved with the races. I'm trying my best to get um, Indians and uh, um, especially Arabs to come to Norelia and do some races here in uh, Norelia as well. Mandira, it is a great thing that you have come to Sri Lanka and promote uh, Sri Lanka to the world and uh, especially uh, in India. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, it's been my pleasure. And we're going to slip into a quick break here on the Winning Post. When we get back, it's to the serious business of horse racing right up here in Euralia. Stay with us.
Horse racing is predominantly considered to be a sport of men. In fact, that is possibly true of the entire industry of sport. And with me is a girl who galloped her way into this world, taking it by storm despite challenges, obstacles, lack of belief. With me here is Rupa Narpat Singh. Thank you very much, Mandira. Rupa, tell me about your journey till here. You know, right from the beginning when you started riding at the age of four, the kind of opposition you faced, the kind of challenges you've had to overcome to get here today. See, in a male-dominated profession, it's not easy for a girl to, first of all, to take such profession. And uh, actually, I would say that the credit goes to my dad since he wanted to see me to set a record in this field. And uh, he's the one who trained me to become a jockey. And second thing, in a male-dominated profession, they don't prefer a lady. Especially if you see uh, trainers, horse trainer and an owner, they prefer uh, the best jockey to ride their horse since they want to win. So the preference becomes very less for a lady jockey. So initially I faced a lot of uh, obstacles, like uh, I, I was uh, declared only on the average horses. So I had to prove my talent only on the average horses initially. By winning on those average horses only I started getting uh, all good horses and I'm lucky enough that I've joined uh, late Dr. M.M. Ramsamy's stable. I was a jockey and um, Mr. Robert Foley who showed all his confidence in me and declared me on all good horses and that's how I gained my confidence and I lot of, won a lot of races from there. I feel uh, like uh, nervous at the same time I'm very much excited to to be raced in uh, this new racetrack actually and uh, since I've raced in Uti course also which is uh, not an easy course, it's a quite tricky course since we have faced a lot of uh, sharp bends over there. But comparing to the, that course, this course is quite uh, not very tricky but at the same time it's not easy to ride over here. After having made her mark on the Indian racing scene, Rupa was all set to blaze the trail in Euralia. We're here at the Royal Turf Club in Euralia. From the time it started, it's come a long way with top class races over here at the Royal Turf Club. Today is no different. There were two races, one class two and one class one. Let's have a closer look. There were a total of seven races on the race card, with the feature being the RTC Christmas Gold Cup for horses in the highest class on the RTC Christmas Race Day. The Sports Ministry Challenge Cup, a Class 2 race of 1,600 metres, had five horses on the card. From Madhya Lagan's yard was Icelandic with Suganthan in the saddle and Celestial Fire had A. Vishwanath stride. S. P. Raju saddled three horses in this race, Gazaki who had Anil holding his reins, Sandstorm who had Dayalan in the saddle and Arabian Gold who had the services of N. Rupa. Gates open, they are racing and uh, missing the kick by about five lengths in the start. There was Arabian Gold and uh, as they settle down to race and it's uh, going to be Sandstorm shows the way in the early stages. Barbara length in front of Gazaki is in second place. Round the turn into the straight and it's uh, Gazaki who comes in on first. Barbara length and a half, two lengths in front of uh, Icelandic is in second place. Further away there comes Arabian Gold. In the centre there's Celestial Fire. But Gazaki's got a commanding lead of about three and a half lengths in front of Arabian Gold. And it's going to be Gazaki. Gazaki is going to win the uh, sports Ministry Challenge Cup. Gazaki wins it from Celestial Fire. Gazaki won this race from the word go by a margin of six lengths from Celestial Fire, who was second, and Icelandic, who finished third. The RTC Christmas Gold Cup was a Class 1 race that had six horses going to the start to race over 1,800 metres. SPA Raju fielded four horses in this race. Silver Streak had the services of Rupa in the saddle. Al Kazaba had Anil on his back to guide him past the post, while Spearhead had SD Mahesh holding his reins. Meheran from Sridhar Selvaratnam's yard was ridden by Suganthan. Charlemagne from SV Madhya Lagan's yard had A. Vishwanath in the saddle. Away they go for the feature event of the day, which is the RTC Christmas Gold Cup. And what a beautiful start this is by all the five runners. And uh, as they pass the winning post for the first time and take the left-handed turn, it is N. Rupa on uh, Silver Streak, the leader. But a length in front of Mehran is in second place. A length and a half away, they spearhead. Uh, they go up the hill towards the 1400-meter marker. Uh, 
round the turn and into the straight and it's Alcazaba who comes in on first but about a length and a half in front of Mehran a gap of a length and a half two lengths away there comes Charlemagne then comes uh, Silver Streak but it's gonna be on the inside there's Alcazaba is about a length and a half two lengths in front of Mehran and Alcazaba is kicking on Gamely and Alcazaba is gonna run away with the RTC uh, Christmas Gold Cup Alcazaba winning this one from Mehran finishes on second and then came Charlemagne to finish on third the Christmas Gold Cup was won by the Diptika Jayakodi owned mare Alcazaba, who won impressively by four lengths. She improved gradually from the rear to take over the running at the top of the straight and then won in style. Mehran finished second and Charlemagne third. The horse was responding very well and the home straight I was very easy and I thought I could make it. And the horse did very well and it responded well. It wasn't much tough competition. It was very well trained by the team, very well taken care of the horses. The track was also very nice. The horse loved it and it made it to the winning post. And that's all we have time for on this episode of The Winning Post. Hope you enjoyed it at least half as much as I have enjoyed presenting it to you. It's been a magnificent day. Remember to follow Mohit Lalwani's tips on Twitter. Of course, if you missed anything, you can always catch it on our YouTube channel. Do like our Facebook page as well. Goodbye. This is Mandira signing off. And until I see you next time, may the horse be with you.